You wanna know what makes our job as counselors harder? When admin and principals don't know our role. In this video, I'm gonna share 10 ways to advocate for yourself if your school leader gives you a duty that falls outside of your scope of work. Tip number one, meet with admin and share your goals. It's best practice to create at least three SMART goals for the school year. You can base these on the three domains of ASCO, which is academics, college and career, and social emotional learning. When you create your goals, be sure they're based on the needs of the school, and you can look at your data sources such as attendance, behavior, academic data such as testing, and other data sources that are relevant to your school. And SMART goals are specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and timely. Tip number two, create a weekly schedule and share it with your admin. I know what you're probably thinking. I am so busy. I don't even know what my day looks like because it varies so much. But if you create a skeleton of a weekly schedule and then share it with your admin, this gives them an idea of how you spend your day and your week. So that way, if you're doing individual sessions or small groups at a block of time, you can advocate for yourself and tell your admin that you're unavailable during those specific times and you'll have a way to back it up because you're supporting students. If you would like to know how to create your weekly schedule after watching this video, be sure to check out this video on the screen. I'll also drop the link in the description below. I walk you through how to create a simple weekly schedule that is effective that you can share with your school leaders. Tip number three, document everything. Document every small group, individual session, and classroom counseling lesson that you complete. You'll thank me later. You can do this in multiple ways. You can use Google Sheets, or you can have a planner. I have an ARC planner that I purchased from Staples that I use to document all of my individual sessions, and I keep it simple. I only write down the student's name, the date that they came in to see me, and I use a code, either academics, social, emotional, or behavior. It's a great idea to keep accurate records because at the end of the year, you can create graphs and charts to show your program and your success for the school year. And again, this helps advocate for your role because you can easily show your admin what things that you've accomplished throughout the year. Tip number four, use data to advocate for yourself. If you ever have a situation where a school leader is trying to get you to do something that you don't necessarily feel comfortable with or it falls outside of your scope of work, you have to be able to use data to back up why you're not able to do that and support your claims. For example, let's say that you have a group of students who are displaying constant disruptive behaviors and you have data from discipline referrals to back it up, but you can create a small group and meet with those students during a block of time. And if admin tries to get you to do something, you can easily say, well, this time is unavailable for me because I'm supporting students. This is what I'm doing, when I'm completing it, and the reason why. And again, you have that data to back it up. I mentioned this earlier, but it's a really good idea to use discipline, academic data, attendance data, and even your needs assessment from your teachers and students as your backup and evidence. And unfortunately, there are still some school leaders who don't understand the role of a counselor. So that's why it's necessary to use data and your program goals to advocate for our profession. So that way we're effective and we're used in the capacity that we went to school and got those degrees for. Tip number five, track how you use your time. Each state has their own regulations for how school counselors should be using their time throughout the day. In Texas, we have the 80-20 rule that states that 80% of a school counselor's time should be devoted to school counseling activities and the other 20% is like planning things. It's an excellent idea for you to track your use of time. There are a couple different apps that you can use for this like Scooter, or you can just simply use a Google Sheet. Either way, it's a great idea to track your use of time. So that way, if you're ever spending too much time in one particular area or one focus, you can show your school leader that you need to shift and do something different. That's why that data is so important. Tip number six, share the needs assessment data with your school leader. If you want your school leaders to take you seriously as the mental health professional that you are, you have to show them the needs assessment data from your teachers, your families, and your students. These are the things that they have identified as issues that they would like to learn more about, so which helps you form your school counseling program, your individual sessions, your classroom lessons, your activities, your events, and even your small groups. And if you can show that to your school leader, this helps them understand why you are doing the things that you are doing and why you're specifically focusing on what areas you're focusing on. I usually use Google Forms for my needs assessment because not only is it simple and easy to share out, Google Forms collects that data and presents it in the form of pie charts and graphs that you can share with your school leader so that they can understand the needs of the school. So if your school leader ever questions why you hosted an event or shared a lesson, 
you can show them the data from your needs assessment to back up why you did what you did and show how it supports students, staff, and families. Tip number seven, make sure that all the activities that you plan align with your school's mission, vision, and school-wide improvement plan. Spend some time at the beginning of the school year or during the summer to familiarize yourself with the school improvement plan so that all of your events and activities are purposeful and meet the needs of your students, staff, and the community. Tip number eight, schedule regular meetings with your admin. At least once a month, sit down with your school leader and share your goals, your programs, the activities and ideas that you have for the upcoming month, your progresses, and your areas of growth. This is a great idea to increase collaboration and to keep them in the loop so that they know what's going on. Also removes the guesswork and the curiosity so they know exactly what you have planned for that month. And it's a great idea to have an agenda that you create and you share with the admin so that you have something in writing. This is also really good for your portfolio at the end of the year and your evaluations. So you can prove that you've collaborated with stakeholders. Tip number nine, be bold, confident, and prepared. Anytime that you meet with your school leader, make sure that you are confident in what you do and know that you are the mental health professional in that building. Be very knowledgeable of the things that are going on with your students, your staff, and your families. Be prepared. And whenever you have a lesson or an event that you plan on hosting, make sure that you can speak about it with factual information. Being prepared and organized helps others see you as the professional that you are. And be bold. There are going to be times where you have to stand up and advocate for yourself or your students or even your staff. School leaders mean well, but there are times when they have to make a decision that may not be in the best interest of everyone. And you have to be able to challenge that in a professional way. So be sure that you are bold, but do it in a way to where it's not coming off as being confrontational. Always stick to the facts. Tip number 10, as I mentioned earlier, you are the mental health professional in your building. So make sure that you have factual data and statistics to back up everything that you do. For example, if you want to host a mental health fair, be sure that you can share the statistical information of how anxiety, depression, and stress affect students and what you can do to decrease those things. Unfortunately, there are times when school leaders forget that we are the mental health professionals in the building and they roll out initiatives or programs that may not be in the best interest of the students, staff, and the families. So again, you have to be the mental health professional and be bold and stand up for what's right. If you haven't noticed a consistent theme of this video, make sure that you have data to back up everything that you do. Be sure to like this video if you got value from it because YouTube will push this video to other people who need to hear this information. And if you would like to support me in other ways, I love coffee and you can buy me a coffee at the link below. It helps my creative juices flow. And if you would like more ways to be successful as a school counselor, check out this video on the screen. Learn from some of the mistakes that I made early on in my career so that you don't make the same ones.